Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a particular card uh, which created a lot of drama in my local store because they were people were using it to steal fetch lands. So Oblivion uh, from it was in the intro, it was in the uh, dual deck as well. I believe it was Battle for Zendikar. Essentially, it costs six for a five eight, and you can get cards from your opponent's library. Uh, you can play lands from your opponent's side of the deck. And why that was so important at the time, uh, during Battle for Zendikar, we also had Contra Tarkir for the majority of the time uh, previously. So they were fetch lands. And if you milled some fetch lands off and you could play the fetch lands, sometimes you people would not play the fetch lands because they wanted to steal them. And what happened would be after the game, especially at the end of game, at end games, I had a particular person at my local store who would intentionally lose and then the last game he would play with would be with uh, someone who is newer and most likely and he would steal the lands that um, the Oblivion Sower would get. And it was very bad and I don't know why they created a card that allowed you to manipulate your opponent's um, deck in that manner. But yeah, I mean, let's say you hit two fetch lands, and at that time, everyone's run everyone running fetch lands because you had fetch lands and you had battle lands. So it's very likely you're going to hit fetch lands, and sometimes they would foil fetch lands. And then you put it under the pile, then you go home and with your opponent's fetch lands. Now, your opponent is not really going to um, notice until they get home, but they don't have your contact information. Maybe you don't go there to the store anymore. Uh, and maybe your opponent doesn't go to the store anymore. And this has happened, I have no particular player at Locals who has done this many, many times at the same store, at the same Locals. And pro I mean, that's really why my friends have abandoned the store. It's not because management is bad, it's not because the tournament organizer is bad. It's just they don't have a like, control over the rampant cheating of a, several individuals. and. It's pretty crazy that someone would do this for a, a game, you know, on a Friday. And there's no worse feeling than when you go home and you have play sets of fetch lands and you realize, oh, that player I played at the last game who I don't know his name, I don't know his phone number, and he's only been there that one time, he, you know, he took my fetch lands. And they, at the time they were 15 to $20 cards, so if you took two of them, you get 15 to $20, you get $40, that's more value than winning their most f &Ms. So this continued on for some time at my locals, and I'm sure the guy went to other locals too, because I didn't see him every week that time. Uh, and, you know, you can call him out, you can, you know, you can definitely point him out, but I don't go to locals every week, my friends are going to locals every week, so it's always harder to do so. And I'm sure that he's still in multiple play sets of some dual lands. I forget what the most common deck, it might have been Windswept Heath uh, was the most common deck, Bant Company, and uh, Flood the Strand. But he would just, you know, go to town with that card. And he his deck wasn't good. This is a guy who loves winning, and during this period of time, like, he cannot stand losing. He's this guy who throws a deck at people. Like, his draft deck at people if he loses. Uh, and it's... <laughs> it's compounded by the fact that he was really happy when he was losing and I was like hmm something is up and it was that card so he forced the card he played that card in just a random he would play bank company with Coco and the whole point of Coco is you know you free or under and then you can play instant speed he would play that oblivion card in Coco and it'd be like okay cool anyway um, that is my story leave me a comment below if you have someone like this at your locals Bye, guys.